Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Charlie Jones from Wissahickon Church. I am so excited to be standing right next to my dear brothers in Christ for this combined worship experience. I'm glad that you are here to join us, and I pray that the Lord will set your soul on fire like ours are on fire continuously, that he is blessing our community, and that we are growing the faith in spite of what we're going through. We're still here to give God all the praise and all the glory for his love and kindness, his mercy, and his grace. I'm Eric McMahon. I'm the pastor of Watershed Church, and we're so happy to be with you this morning because even when things feel out of control, we know that we have a God who is in control. And so we just want to help draw you into a worship experience today so you can experience that in your life. Everybody, Ray Garcia here from Roxboro Church, and I just want to say welcome. On behalf of all of our churches, welcome. Wherever you're at while you're tuning in, we are glad that you're going to spend this morning with us worshiping the Lord. We believe that God is in the midst of our is, is in our midst and He is doing something that is absolutely great right here in the Roxborough community. So this morning, settle in, enjoy a time of worship with the Lord, and let's believe upon God to bring hope in a season that might seem a little unconventional. All the information about how you can continue to partner with our churches and invest in the ministry of what God is doing here in the Roxborough community can be found in the description. We look forward to worshiping with you. Let's worship the Lord now. Would you pray with me? Father God, we, we thank you for the opportunity to join together three churches, join together with friends and family near and far. We thank you for the gift of, of the opportunity to worship in your presence. And so, God, whether we're in our, our living rooms or whether we're crowded around a TV screen or whether we're staring at our phones for this time of worship, I pray, God, that you would be the one that our hearts would point to. I pray, God, that you would be the center and the focus. And the way that the churches come together today, I pray, God, that this would give light to all that you are doing. In the midst of the storms of life, you are present. We find hope. We seek to express the love of God as we enjoy the grace that comes only from you. God, be in our midst and receive this hour of worship as all the people of God, wherever they are, together proclaim, amen.
mystery of the cross I cannot comprehend the agonies of Calvary you the perfect only one crush your son who drank the bitter cup reserved for me your blood has washed away my sin Jesus thank you the Father's wrath completely satisfied Jesus thank you once you enemy now seated at your table Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. It's by your perfect sacrifice, by your perfect sacrifice, I
Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. God, we do thank you that your son Jesus is such a wonderful, wonderful Savior. And and God, it's good to enter into your courts with with thanksgiving because we'd rather spend a thousand days there, a thousand years there than anywhere else. And so, God, we thank you for inhabiting the praises of your people here today. And Lord, just prepare our hearts to receive a message from you and from your word. And God, may we be doers of the word and not hearers only. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, friends. My name is Pastor Ricky, and I'm so glad you're tuning in with us this Sunday morning. If you're like me, uh, growing up as a kid, and even sometimes now, uh, I really enjoyed watching uh, Magic And uh, my favorite part of a magic trick is when you see that big reveal at the end and you wonder, how did they do that? A magician's motto is magicians never reveal their secrets. And that's because once we figure out a magic trick, like all of us probably guess, it kind of takes away from the the magical nature of it, right? Uh, Unlike a magician, Jesus shares us all the secrets of being in a relationship with God and serving the kingdom of God. 
Now, Jesus did perform some really amazing miracles, but most times he revealed these secrets through teachings uh, called parables. They were short stories. And today our story comes from Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 29. And we'll learn God's secret that he revealed to us. And that is God made us to do great things. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me to Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 29, or you can follow along with the story on the screen as I read. Our story begins, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who was going to another place for a visit. Before he left, he called for his servants and told them to take care of his things while he was gone. He gave one servant five bags of gold another servant, two bags of gold, and a third servant, one bag of gold to each one as much as he could handle. Then he left. The servant who got five bags went quickly to invest the money and earn five more bags. The same way the servant who had two bags invested them and earned two more. But the servant who got one bag went out and dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, the master came home and asked the servants what they did with his money. The servant who was given five bags of gold brought five more bags to the master and said, Master, you trusted me to care for five bags of gold, so I use your five bags to earn five more. The master answered, You did well. You are a good and loyal servant. Because you were loyal with small things, I will let you care for much greater things. Come and share my joy with me. Then the servant who had been given two bags of gold came to the master and said, Master, you gave me two bags of gold to care for. So I used your two bags to earn two more. The master answered, you did well. You are a good and loyal servant. Because you were loyal with small things, I will let you care for much greater things. Come and share my joy with me. Then the servant who had been given one bag of gold came to the master and said, Master, I knew that you were a hard man. You harvest things that you do not plant. You gathered crops where you do not sow and seed. So I was afraid and went and hid your money in the ground. Here is your bag of gold. The master answered, you are a wicked and lazy servant. You say you knew that I harvest things I did not plant and that I gathered crops where I did not sow any seed. You should have put my gold in the bank. When I came home, I would have received my gold back with interest. So the master told his servant, take the bag of gold from the servant and give it to the servant who has 10 bags of gold. Those who have much will get more. And they, will, and they will have much more than they need. But those who do not have much will have everything taken from them. So in our story, there were two workers who took the money. They were taken care of, and they went and earned more money with it. This made the boss super happy. But the third worker was afraid he might lose his boss's money. So he took it and buried it to keep it safe. Was the boss happy with the third worker? No. The boss was seriously angry. He trusted the worker with something great, and the servant didn't do anything worthwhile with it. Now, what does this mean for us? God hasn't given us bags of cash, but God has given us all types of abilities, interests, gifts, and personalities that make us who we are. Maybe God made you really kind and understanding or a good listener. Maybe God made you really strong or really fast. God made some of you to be interested in art and others in sports or in gaming. God doesn't want you to hide any of these things. God wants you to see those talents and use them to do great things for his kingdom because that's how God made you. Now, parents, an awesome way to apply this for you and your kids is to ask one another this week, what am I good at? And then make a list and see what you come up with. Second, pray and ask God to help you figure out ways to use those gifts to help serve your family and others, especially since most of us are Uh, stuck indoors. This might be tricky, but ask God to help you to be creative. I know that he desires to. To continue this conversation with your family and for some resources on today's story, uh, click the link in the bio of this video. Now, as we get ready to hear God's word from Pastor Ray, would you join me in a moment of prayer? Dear God, we thank you so much that you love us, and as an extension of your love, you've given us gifts, abilities, and, and so much that we, can, uh, that we have to be able to use to spread your kingdom. And God, I ask that you would help all of us to uh, understand what those gifts and abilities are and show us how we can use them this week to bless others and help them to know you better. 
We pray all this, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Well, I want to say welcome again to everybody who's tuning in with us this morning. It is a joy to gather together with friends who we know and to gather afar with friends who we don't yet know. I know one thing for certain, the days that have gone by, the last 10 of them, have been absolutely crazy. And if you're anything like me, you've lost a little bit of hair, and you maybe ate a couple too many cookies while you've been stuck in the house. But in the midst of all that, you've probably been asking some questions. You've probably been wondering where and why and how. You've probably been looking to social media and looking onto the uh, internet and watching the news feeds, just trying to figure out what was the next piece of news that was going to come. And if anything, like me, those moments have led to moments of deep question and longing for something to be hopeful for. We're here this morning, we've been singing to a God who we, we placed our hope in. And we've been singing about promises from God that, that we hang on to. And I want to encourage you now to lean in, really just dial your heart in for the next 20 minutes or so as we talk intentionally from the Word of God about where it is that we find hope. If you have a Bible, you can go ahead and flip over, open to Psalm 13. In the 13th Psalm, oh, by the way, in our church, if you've ever visited our church, uh, when, when, when we address the, the, the text that we're going to go to, when you flip open in your book, you just kind of yell out and proclaim that you're there simply by saying amen. And, uh, and, and I'm going to wait for you till I can hear you from your house saying amen. So I'm just going to wait and wait. Psalm 13, about, about a third of the way through your Bible. Go ahead and flip there now. No, really, go ahead and flip there now. I'll wait for those who are here. There's about eight of us in the room, so I'll wait for them as well. When they say amen, I'll know that you're ready back home. Amen. They got there fast. Here we go, Psalm 13. This is what it says. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How, how long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I, I trust in your unfailing love, and my heart rejoices in your salvation. And I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Father God, in ways that only you can, would you text, take, this, take this text and bring it to life? Might we, like David, be able to cry out with our questions of longing and move to a place of hope? This morning, meet us in this place, right where we are, at home, on our couch, gathered with friends and family, or even if we're all alone. Be present that we might find hope in Jesus' name. Amen. During great times of trial and calamity, we find ourselves with a sense of abandonment and isolation. Have you ever had those worries of feeling alone or feeling like, you know, like, like the world has left you and, and you're just kind of stuck? Maybe you felt like you were in your house and you just couldn't get out. I think David is wrestling with some of those feelings of being alone when he starts off in the psalm and he says, hey, God, will you forget me forever? Did you leave me here all by myself? I'll be honest with you, uh, I, I'm a dad of four kids, and my kids are all pretty young, and there were a couple of moments this week when I actually wanted to be left alone. 
Yeah, I know, I know, I know, kids, you're here and you're listening too. And there were probably a couple moments, kids, when you wanted your parents to leave you alone. And so we've all wrestled a little bit with that feeling of being alone or maybe wanting to be alone, but that's a little bit different. But here in the text, we see David kind of crying. He's like, he's like, God, I just feel like I'm all alone here. I feel like you left me. I feel like I'm abandoned. I feel like everything that was good is gone. And, and all I have left is this season of despair. One of the best things you could do during these uh, days of, of, of great trial as we as a nation and even beyond that as, as, as the globe, around the globe, as we wrestle through this, this virus that is, that is literally attacking us, one of the greatest things you can do is, is try not to stare at the social feed all the time. Try to check a little bit less because mixed in with those moments of happiness that you find on there is a lot of, yeah, a lot of things that just bring us down. We're hopeful this morning that this time of worship is something that actually turns us up, that it's something that actually allows us to lean in, and, and we're going to get there by the end of the text. But, but maybe you can identify with where David is at right now. He's feeling alone, and you're saying, hey, God, did you forget me in this place? Did you give up on me? God, did you take your favor away from me? God, why am I all alone in this spot? And, and then he moves from a place of just being alone to a sense of being hopeless. He says, how long must I wrestle with the thoughts that are deep in my own mind and deep in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? God, I've got no chance in this fight. I, I'm alone. I'm recognizing it in my mind. I just feel like I feel hopeless. I feel abandoned. I feel like I just want to give up. And God, I'm just crying out and saying, how long do I have to be in this spot? God, are you going to do something about it? I have no other solution, God. There's nothing that anyone else can do. I am a typical guy. When I see a problem, I hope I don't offend anybody when I say this, but I think most guys are like this. When, when we see something that needs to be fixed, we want to fix it. We just feel like if we could fix it, we could move on beyond it and forget about it. And every time I think about the virus that is sweeping across our nation, this COVID-19 thing, and, and, and like, you know, the, the, the cough into your arm, and the, the don't sneeze on your neighbor, and the social distancing. I just, I want to come up with some way to just fix it. I just want to come up with some quick solution that'll just make it better. I imagine I'm not alone in that either. And every time I invest my mind into thinking about it, I find myself feeling a bit defeated because I just can't fix it. Lord, how long do I have to live in these thoughts? Day after day, my sorrow is in my heart. How long will the enemy win this battle? But if you're reading through your Bible in Psalm 13 and verse 3, he says, Look on me and answer. Lord my God, give light to my eyes or I'm going to die. God, be the answer because I've tried everything else. And if it depends on me, we ain't got a shot. But God, you, you can. You can. I love what happens right here as you get through verse 4 and into verse 5. There's a shift in David's story. So verses 1 through 4, David is talking about being alone and being hopeless and feeling defeated. He's talking about needing God to do it because he can't. He has no solution other than God. He finally gives up and just says, God, I just need you to do it. And you get into verse 5 and something shifts. He says, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. The trust that he's talking about here in, in, in verse 5 is we talk about trust a lot in the New Testament, especially if you're still in your Bible. Go ahead and flip over to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Now, we're going to get preaching here in a second, so I hope you're with me. John chapter 14. Let me hear amen when you get there. John chapter 14. I'll wait for you no matter where you're at. I'll wait for you. 
Okay, one, two, but there's eight of us here, so I'm waiting on a couple more. Okay, there you go. John chapter 14, starting in the first verse. This is what John says in his gospel. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe or you trust in God. Believe also in me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Why? Because you have trust in God. And so Jesus says you can also trust in him. When John's using, when, when Jesus is talking and John's recording it, he says, you trust in God, you can also trust him. That same trust, that belief, is this idea that God only you can. It's the same thing that David was crying out in the psalm when David had gone through all of his emotions. And he said, finally, he said, I believe that God, you can. Your love will never fail. It's an unfailing love. This idea of belief, this idea of trusting, it's something that bores deep down within. It's not just like I have this idea, and it's not just like I, I have this emotion for it, my heart patterns for it. It's like this, this whole body, I am fully in, in, the, in, in, in mind, in heart, in body, in soul, in action, that God, you can, and only you can. Stay there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit further. We, we're pretty familiar with, uh, with uh, John 3, 16, but let's look at it again anyway. John 3, 16, 17, and 18. Come on, somebody. Stay with me. Come on. Come on. For God, so I didn't even wait for the amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes, whoever trusts in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Whoever believes or trusts in Jesus is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not trusted in the name of God's one and only son. This belief, this word belief or word trust, this idea that, that God, I have placed everything on who you are. I have placed everything on the hope that comes from you. I have placed everything on the understanding that God, only you can. I can't. You can. I can't. You can. I believe that. So look, so I'm, I'm going to identify a couple of things right here that, that he's talking about when he says trust, and I hope you can follow along with me on these. I trust. I believe. And then he says, I believe especially in your unfailing love, in your unfailing love. Here's what he says, a couple of points for unfailing love. Ideas about God's love. Number one, God's unfailing love is unconditional. In Ephesians chapter 2, in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul says that God's unfailing love is, is unconditional. It is a gift that is freely given. By the way, today, if you're just trying to figure out, like, how do you make it through, let me give you this. The gift of God is the answer to how it is that we find hope in, 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 in the one who can lead us into tomorrow. God's unfailing love is expressed first as a free gift. If you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul gives a lot of thought about what love looks like. But if I could sum all of it up, verses, one through, verses 11 through 18 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I would say this, that, that love is unbreakable. It's unbreakable. It's fully God. It is unbreakable. No matter what we do, no matter how hard we push back against it, True love is unbreakable. The third thing, matter of fact, if you have your Bible still, flip over to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. That's all the way back in the front of your Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Come on, somebody, get there with me. I need to know somebody's there. Thank you. Deuteronomy chapter 10 in the 21st verse. If you're there, amen, one more time. This is what it says. He is the one you praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders that you saw with your own eyes. God speaking to the people of God. He says that, that God is the one who performed the great and awesome wonders that gave display, gave evidence to the love of God. I want to say this to somebody today. God has already displayed how much he loved you, no matter what the calamity of life is, no matter what the attacks are that we're under, the expression of God's love has already been put on display in your life. You might notice some big ways, you might notice some small ways, but I know this, 
even you being present today, listening to this message, is partly the way that God is expressing to you and to me the love that he has for us. God's love is on display in miraculous ways. And by the way, if I believe in a God of miracles, if I believe in a God of miracles, this does not dismiss the reality of the storms of life. It just points me to the answer. If I believe in the, God, in the miraculous nature of God, it doesn't dismiss the fact that there's a virus out there. It just points to the ultimate answer. God is the one who my hope is in. God is the one who I believe in. The last thing I want to say about the unfailing nature of God's love is that it's an abiding love. Go ahead and flip back to the end of your Bible. Go to 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. I'll say it one more time. Flip to the end of your Bible to 1 John chapter 4. Somebody there? Anybody there yet? 1 John 4? Okay, a little slow on the pages, but they got there. 1 John 4, 16, here's what it says. 4, 16, it says, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. The unfailing nature of God's love is an abiding love. It's a present with you love. It's one that we live in, and it's through that love that we live out the expressions of God's love. So you're saying, hey, Pastor Ray, that's cool. I, I, I get it. I get it. I started in the beginning of this talking about feeling alone. I started at the beginning of this talking about feeling hopeless. I started at the beginning feeling defeated, and, and maybe I feel a little bit better because I have this idea that God loves me. But what do I do with that? Well, you know, I'm really glad you asked that question. Let me give you a couple of action steps for us today. First, I invite you, cry out with us as we cry out to God for mercy. Look, the trials are real. And whether you're, ba- whether you're battling the virus that's coming or whether you're fighting in your own home with, 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 with relationships or, or whether, whether it's work-related or whether it's the, the oppression or wh- whatever it is that's coming your way, the battles of life are real. Let me invite you. Cry out to God. I have, I told you a minute ago, I have four kids, and I've learned as a dad that, and I probably learned this more from my wife, but I learned as a dad that, 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 that our kids, you know, they, they know how to get our attention. They know how to, to do things to, to trigger action for us. And so recently I've learned to differentiate between cries. Now, don't, don't judge me on this. Don't judge me on this. But, but, but I've learned that there's some cries I can just kind of sit on the couch through, right? So just just happened just two days ago. I was in the kitchen, and we were, like, washing dishes or something. We were kind of hanging out in the kitchen. When I say we, I mean me and my wife. And, and, uh, and the kids were playing in the living room, the two little ones, and the big ones were probably playing somewhere else. But the two little ones were playing in the living room, and, and then we heard it. You know, we heard the, the we, we, heard, we heard one of our kids, I won't tell you who she is, but I've got three boys and a girl, so we heard one of our kids, and, and, and she, was, she, was, she was crying, and I was like ready to pounce in action. I was like, oh, my baby girl is hurt, and my wife kind of grabbed me and said, hey, just, just, wait, just wait a minute, just wait a minute, because see, she had already learned how to differentiate between the cries. She knew that that was a play cry, that her and her little brother We're playing a game, and she was making believe like she was hurt. But I didn't know that, and my heart started to pitter pattern. I I wanted to run in her direction because when my when my my baby girl cries, the heart of the father responds. Can I tell you this? I'm just just an average dad, and if I'll respond when my kid cries, I gotta imagine. God of the universe, when he hears the cries of his kids, he's going to leap to action. I want to invite you. Take your cares, your worries, your pains. Cry out to God. Burden the ear of God with the trials that you're facing. Second, 
Scripture says that we are to cast our fears on God. We're to confess, God, in this, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. David said, God, are you going to leave me here? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Cast your fears on God. The way that we cast our fears on God, I'm going to look at Matthew chapter 11 real quick. Matthew chapter 11. So let me, one more time, flip with me one more time. Come on, come on, Matthew chapter 11. This is what he says in Matthew chapter 11. He says, uh, starting in the 28th verse, says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I, God, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I will cast my fears. I will cast my worries on God. I will curl up with the Father. I will come and I will lean into him because he has promised that in him that what he leans on us is easy. Together, he with us, we will walk a new road, a new path, a new journey. The yes, the thing out there is real, but it's not greater than the one who I cast it upon. And so God, whatever's coming my way, I'm crying out to you. And then I'm laying down before you the fears that I have as I face it. And then finally, I want to encourage you. Would you believe and trust in the true nature of God? God himself declares in scripture that he is love. God declared that, that through him we might have life, and that life is going to be full. Friends, I want to say this to you today. The God of love, the God who is love, the God who loved you and me enough that he offered his son on our behalf that we might be reconciled with him forever. That God, I'll take my belief and my trust, and I'll invest it deep down in him. I don't know what these days are like for you right now, but I believe this, that in him we can find hope. In him we can find hope. Hope the battle anything that we stand against. Hope for a day that will come that is greater. Hope for and a belief and trust in the permanent nature of God's unfailing love. Friends, whatever you go through this week, know these things. You need not go through it alone. No matter what your mind might say, no matter what your situation might look like, you are not alone. Know this, that the God, of, the God of creation desires for you to cry out before him, desires for you to lay down before him the worries you have, and that his unfailing and unchanging nature is to be expressive of his love for us. Would you join me in praying as we end this time of God's word? God, sometimes we pray while we believe, and sometimes we pray that we might believe. God, my situation has not changed. The virus is still all around us. The, 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 the lockdown is still here. God, we're still in our houses. We're still connecting together through the gift of technology because we can't be in in the presence of one another because of social distancing. God, there are still people who are dying as a result of the infection from the virus. God, it seems like nothing's changed. But I will trust in your unfailing love. And my heart will rejoice in your gift of salvation. And God, as that happens, as, as my posture shifts, 
God, I'll sing praises to you. Because I know, Lord God, that by your very nature, that you are good. You are so, so good. God, we pray for every single person who this message lands on their ear. God, we pray for whatever it is they're facing. We pray for any feelings that they might have around it. We pray for the thoughts that are in their mind. I pray, God, that you would extend their days. I pray, God, that you would battle against the thoughts and the worries that they have. I pray, Lord God, that you would, you would allow them space to cry out to you, to, to, to burden your ear for hope. God, I ask, here and now, in agreement with all the believers, that anyone who might hear this and might not yet know you to be the Lord of their, of their, of their life, God, I pray that the great gift of hope would come from you as you reveal yourself to be their king, to be their Lord, to be their Messiah, to be the one who died in their place, to be the one who has promised the gift of eternal life to anyone who would trust in you. Father God, when we're absent together in the body, might we be connected even more with you and find connection with one another while at the safe distance through the gift of modern technology today. Lord, we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, wherever you're at, I want to invite you. We're going to sing one more song. And during this song, about halfway through the song, Pastor Charlie's going to come up and he's going to give us a charge. And then we'll close out with the second half of the song. But where you're at right there, consider crying out to God, casting your anxieties on him, and believing and trusting in him in the nature, the unchanging, unfailing nature of his love. God bless you, everybody.
we are so excited right now that uh, we have the ability to still be able to reach you. It's just like the Holy Spirit, just like the presence of God. He is always with you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you until the ends of the earth. We just have to remember that no matter how far we are, rather when we can't touch you, the presence of the Lord can touch you. And wherever the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so I leave you with this. Take some time to seek ye first the kingdom of righteousness and let everything else be added unto you. I believe that God is with you. I believe that God is still blessing. I believe that God is still a miracle work and wonder. And he's waiting for you. He's waiting for your cry out. He is there to hold you at this time. And I just thank God for his ever presence in our lives. And so I leave you with this scripture. It says, now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And if you're sitting with somebody, tap your neighbor and say amen. Amen. When we shall come with trumpet sound. If you are still with us, congratulations, you made it to the end of the sermon. Uh, please join us next week as Pastor Eric McMahon brings an awesome word. We'll see you then.